Okay, just going to go through and refute some Catholic heresies regarding Mary. Of course, the Mary of Roman Catholicism is not the biblical Mary, but I'm going to go through some heresies that the Roman Catholic Church propagates with regards to Mary and refute them. So, of course, they say that Mary was sinless, and this is simply not true. Luke chapter 1, verse 47. This is Mary speaking. And my soul hath rejoiced in God my Savior. So, she's calling God her Savior. Um, only sinners need a Savior. Mark chapter 2, verse 17 talks about that. How Jesus Christ came to call sinners to repentance. Only a sinner needs a Savior. So, if Mary was sinless, why is she calling God her Savior? Because she wouldn't need one if she was sinless. Luke chapter 2, verse 22. It says, and when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. So Mary was being purified because she was still doctrinally under the Old Testament, under the law of Moses. Leviticus chapter 12, verse 1 to 7, talks about being purified under the law of Moses. So she still had to be purified. How does that work if she was sinless? Why did she have to be purified? She was not sinless. And another heresy, a good verse to actually condemn the Roman Catholic Mary worship they do. And they can deny it all they want, but they do worship her. And it'll say, oh, it's veneration. Oh, uh, no. The way they treat her when they bow down to pictures of her, that is worship. By biblical standards. They can deny it, but it is worship. Luke chapter 11, verse 27 and 28. Here's your first Roman Catholic in the Bible. Your first Mary worshiper in the Bible. Luke 11, verses 27 and 28. Get ready, this is the first Roman Catholic in the Bible. Because Roman Catholics will say, well, you know, Roman Catholic, the Roman Catholic Church was started obviously hundreds of years after the Bible, but the Roman Catholic mentality was right here in the Bible. Let me show you. Luke chapter 11, verse 27 and 28. And it came to pass, as he spake these things, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice and said unto him, Blessed is the womb that bare thee, and the paps which thou hast sucked. And look, look how Jesus responded. But he said, Yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Um, why didn't he say, Well, thank you for praising, thank you for praising my, my mother, the mother of God. Um, no. He shut, the first time someone tries to worship Mary, praise Mary like a Catholic would, Jesus Christ shuts it down. He stops it. Kind of a problem there. If we're supposed to just worship Mary like the Catholics make it out to seem, and again, they'll keep saying, Well, we don't worship her, we venerate her. Yes, you do. By biblical standards, you do worship her. If we're supposed to treat her the way the Catholics do, why did Jesus Christ not do the same thing? Why did he shut, why did he shut it down when it, did, when it did happen? 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. The Catholics also love the claim that Mary is a mediator, the, the co-mediator, as they call it, or the co-mediatrix, whatever. But who is the mediator? 1 Timothy 2, 5. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Uh, Jesus Christ is the only mediator. Look at that. The one mediator between God and man. Mary is not some kind of co-mediator. There's one mediator, mediator, and it's Jesus Christ. And secondly, was Mary a virgin her whole life? No, that's also a heresy. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. Matthew 1, 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this, this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with the child of the Holy Spirit. Or I'm sorry, the Holy Ghost. Same thing, actually. So she was espoused to Joseph. So she was not a virgin her whole life. And some more further proof on that. Mark chapter 6, verse 3. says, this is not the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and, and of Judah and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. Um, his brothers and sisters. And they'll say, well, the Catholics say, no, it's talking about her cousins. No, it's not. Okay, believe me. Um, you don't call your cousins brothers and sisters. Ridiculous. Uh, Jesus Christ had brothers and sisters. You know what that would mean? Compare this with Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. She was a spouse with Joseph. She had other children. She was not a virgin her whole life, like the heretical apostate Roman Catholic Church will claim. So those are just some of the heresies 
of the Roman Catholic Church's spouses regarding Mary and how they can just be easily refuted by a basic basic understanding of Scripture. But you see, Catholics don't read the Scriptures. They, they're, they're told what to believe. They're told what to believe by the priests. They don't actually look at it themselves because Roman Catholicism is a cult. They don't look at the Bible for themselves. They blindly follow what the priest says. That's why when they when you, when you argue with Catholics, they'll just parrot the same arguments over and over and over again because they're being told what to say by their priests, by their popes, who are antichrist. So, don't be deceived by Roman Catholicism. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.